But now to the woman exposing the secret halal certification of foods in our supermarkets. There's been an explosion in the number of products that have been given the stamp of approval. Now some proudly display the label, but as Damien Hansen reports, many hide the fact. We are funding uh, the promotion of Sharia law in this country by buying halal certified products. Forget it. If you don't want to eat halal, live on pork and wine because even water is halal. This suburban kitchen is headquarters for one woman's fight against what's being described as the halalification of Australia. Mother of three, Kira Lee Smith, is compiling a dossier of companies she accuses of jeopardising the Australian way of life. We don't want to exclude anyone. We simply want people to have a choice. And to have a choice, you have to have information. And we're finding that with halal certification, there's not a great deal of information. Muslims are only allowed to eat certain meat and food products that are considered to be halal. Foods that are eligible for halal certification contain no pork or other pig products, no alcoholic beverages, no blood, and no meat from carnivorous animals. Certification is taken very seriously, and it's big business, worth $2 trillion worldwide every year. We're happy, like I said, very happy for Muslims to be Muslims in this country and to eat halal certified foods for themselves, but I don't want to pay for that. So she refuses to. Kira Lee doesn't buy any products that are halal certified. The website is Halal Choices and it's all about giving the Australian consumer a choice of whether or not they want to purchase halal certified foods. Whatever Halal uh, Choices is doing is water off a duck's back. It actually increases my business. Mohammed El Mauli is head of Halal Australia, one of the country's 13 government approved halal certification organisations and he's a very rich man. Halal certification has made me a millionaire and I am happy to say that. The halal economy is booming. Everything from cosmetics to leisure products and holidays. Even entire workforces are being tailored to the Islamic market. You are eating halal day and night. When you go to Woolworths, you're eating halal. When you go to Coles, you're eating halal. When you go to Benjamin Franklin's, you're eating halal. Even companies with food that's automatically halal will pay for certification, all for a competitive edge. It is fashionable, it is a topic of issue, and it is a growing phenomena that is not necessarily tied to religion or to culture. Barry Urquhart is Australia's leading marketing expert. He believes halal labelling is a tool that, if used properly, can reap incredible returns. It is growing faster than food and retail sales generally in Europe, North America and Australia. I believe there is pressure out there and I believe that companies are being accused of being racist if they do not uh, give in to this halal certification. The fees are kept secret and companies ordered to sign non-disclosure statements. It is deceptive. It is absolutely deceptive. And like I said, I, some I've even asked are your products halal certified and they've said no and then we found out that we have a certificate that says otherwise. So some of Australia's biggest companies are lying to you? Absolutely. No, it's not being deceptive. It's because the ignoramuses that are around who write to those countries, companies and say to them, um, we don't want to buy your product if it's halal. They are the ones who are actually pushing that. Others like Arnott's Biscuits say they refuse to ha have any religious certification whatsoever. So that's fantastic when companies voluntarily make that very public. But Kirillie says there are others reluctant to disclose their product's halal status. It costs probably about $10,000 just to have a new label. So this is an expense that uh, sometimes companies don't go through. As to where the certification money is going, Mohammed refutes any suggestion it funds the spread of Sharia law into Australia. Halal certification doesn't fund anything other than my wife's shoes. It should be an attribute that people are aware of and buy on. Caveat emptor, let the buyer beware, but more important, let the buyer be advised. We have the right to know what's in our food. We have the right to know where our money is going.